Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to start talking about gears. Uh, gears are useful uh, as power transmission devices. Uh, they've been around for a long time. There's, there's early evidence of them uh, as much as about 4,600 years ago uh, of gears existing. They are rugged, um, which means that they can, you know, operate in dirty environments and still, you know, maintain their function. Um, they're relatively efficient, you know, you know upwards sometimes of 98% efficient, so, so very little loss uh, through the use of gears. Um, they are more costly than, than some other options. So because of the, the process of manufacturing them and the materials, they're a little bit more expensive um, than what we might find with other options. So we're going to start with spur gears. And uh, when we get into other gear types, a lot of times we're basing what we do off of spur gears um, kind of as a, as a baseline um, because they're the simplest of our gear options um, and they, they give a lot of useful useful information. So when we talk about gears, the first thing we want to be thinking about is, is gear geometry. So my guess is that many of you are familiar with the gear tooth profile, this, this involute profile. Um, the general idea behind the involute profile is that it gives us a constant rotational velocity despite the fact that these teeth are coming into contact uh, first at the first at the top, near the top face, and then that contact between this tooth and the, you know, corresponding tooth on the mating gear, that contact point travels down this face uh, as it, as that uh, passes through that rotation. So, as you can imagine, because you're changing the radius of that point of contact, first from out here and then moving towards uh, the center of the gear, you're changing the, the, pitch, what's called the pitch line velocity, which is basically the tangential velocity uh, of that contact point. So if we didn't use, you know, this kind of unique profile of the tooth, we'd have two gears that, you know, the drive gear would presumably be um, constant velocity, constant input velocity, but the output gear that's being driven would uh, change velocity, it would have kind of a sinusoidal um, small variation in its velocity, which isn't really desirable for most applications. So this involute profile gives us a, a constant velocity in, in that contact. So other geometry things to be aware of, we have, you know, the, what we call the pitch circle, which is, is this uh, line here. We have uh, the circular pitch, which is basically measured on the pitch circle and it is the distance from one point on a tooth to the equivalent point on the next tooth. So it gives us kind of a measure of, of how many teeth, say, per inch along that pitch circle, um, or inches per tooth or millimeters per tooth, depending on which unit system we're talking about. Uh, we have a diameter that we often measure at that pitch circle uh, location. We have face width, we have thickness of this top area. And, you know, you can see that the, the, the top of the tooth does not come to a point. And, you know, for the same reason that we might see that in a screw, uh, it, you know, leads to um, weakness. You know, the, the thinner this is, the weaker it is, and more likely it is to shear, uh, shear off. Also, it gives us cl um, clash allowance, so it gives us clearance. And, and we can also see that down here. We have some clearance space so that the, the teeth aren't bottoming out when they mate with the, the pairing gear. Um, we have fillets at the bottom for the exact reason that you might expect uh, that, you know, we're trying to reduce stress concentrations. If you can imagine, you know, the gears as they come into contact, and we'll talk about this in a minute, but they apply forces, right, tangential to, to the gear, and that introduces stress at the bottom. So these fillets help uh, reduce stress concentrations uh, as, a, as a result. All right, so some of the key uh, things that we might, would want to know. The pitch. Um, equal to pi D over N with units of inches. 
Uh, D in this case is the diameter at the pitch circle, and N is the number of teeth that the gear has, uh, and that gives us the pitch. So it's measured, uh, again, in inches. However, many times, in, in most of our equations, we use what's called the diametral pitch, written with a capital P. Kind of hard to distinguish here between a lowercase p and a capital P, but hopefully you're kind of getting that. And it's equal to N over D with units of teeth per inch. And if we're talking about, and this is in Imperial, let's mute that. We're talking about Imperial engineering units here. We also have module. And this is when we're talking in SI units. And M is equal to basically the inverse of the diametral pitch, so D over N, and therefore is in units of millimeters per tooth. So I actually don't know why, um, you know, when, in, when we're specifying an imperial units or gears in imperial unit systems, we use pitch, uh, diametral pitch versus um, in SI system, we're using module and that they're the inverse of each other. I don't know. I'm sure there's a story there uh, and some reason, but it's just something to be aware of that, you know, the, 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 the units are, are basically the inverse of each other, teeth per inch versus millimeters per tooth. Um, when we're looking up like a, a like a standards based, um, for our, uh, a standard basis for our options when we're trying to find uh, appropriate gears. All right. So when we have two uh, gears that come into contact, we have, you know, and if I just kind of draw a really bad drawing of a gear tooth coming into contact with another gear tooth, and we can make an angle between these two. So if this was like the tangential line, we could have an angle which represents the line of contact between these two, the line of um, action of the force that makes, uh, that transmits power between these two teeth. That angle we call the pressure angle, Greek letter phi, and that's again something that uh, is standardized as part of the gear specification and designed as part of that gear profile. So we can have different um, different standards, but pressure angle uh, again representing the line of action of the force that you know is at that contact surface. So it's basically normal to the surface where those two gear teeth make contact. We can simplify two gears that come into contact uh, rather than like say we're trying to draw this out and try to understand it um, typically we're not going to draw you know all the little gear teeth around because that would be super tedious instead we can just represent these as circles uh, using their pitch circles and if we have one rotating and they make contact here then of course the other one rotates this way and these two pitch circles are related to each other by their velocities rotational velocity and their diameters something like that and here I'm using G subscript to describe the gear which is the larger of the two that are mating together. And then the P here stands for pinion, which is the smaller of the two gears in a pair. Uh, 
And you may ask, you know, well, why do we have this negative sign? Well, because in this equation, we're basically relating the angular velocities of these two gears. And, and I'm sorry, I'm saying gears, but you know, we call one of them a gear and we call the other one a pinion. They're still both gears, but just kind of a terminology thing. So we have these angular velocities and relating them to the diameters and the angular velocities are in the opposite direction, right? If one of them's rotating clockwise then the other's rotating counterclockwise. So that's really what this negative sign is indicating um, in that equation. Okay, so we have these, these two gears uh, coming together like this. Now if we pull them apart, like is shown on this, this figure on the left hand side, we have forces being applied and the net force F here is applied along that pitch or excuse me that pressure angle phi so we can see that here uh, but we often break that net force down into a radial force and a tangential force so tangent to the circle um, or in the radial direction and these two forces are really uh, important for us to be thinking about so that tangential force F sub T is oriented like that. And this is really the force that gives us power transmission. So if you think about, you know, power being transmitted through one of these, one of these gears, which is the driven and one of them, which, uh, which is the driving, you know, from driving to driven, um, the power really goes from one gear to the other by that tangential force, right? Tangential force times radius gives us torque on the gear and torque is, is you know, what we're, what we're passing through. On the other hand, we have the radial force. And the radial force points down, right? And that arrow pointing down has a line of action that passes through the center of the gear. So if I kind of sketch that in, it passes through the center of the gear, right? And torque times radius in this case is zero because the line of action is zero. Um, there's no radius, which means that there's no power transmitted. There's no torque transmitted by the radial force. The only uh, thing that this force accomplishes is gear separation. So as you can imagine, or as you can kind of see, I guess, from the diagram, we have one force pushing down on this gear and one force pushing up, both the radial forces equal and opposite, and they're attempting to push the gears apart, right? And that's probably generally not good. So that radial uh, gear separation force needs to be accounted for in our mounting. So whatever we are, are mounting these gears onto, whether it's, it's a, a shaft or something else, we need to know that that shaft can, can provide resistance to that separation force because if it's too weak, um, say the shaft is too thin or it's, it's the gears mounted at a long distance from like a, like a grounding point, then those gears could push apart and start slipping, right? You could start jumping teeth. So that separation force is not really accomplishing anything in terms of actual efficiency or, or power transmission. It's actually a, a loss, right? Um, it's a power loss. But it, it does uh, require consideration because in our design, it could lead to problems. All right, so of course we can use geometry to relate these two things. And if we do that, we find that F sub R equals F sub T tan phi. So that can be useful. You know, a lot of times we might uh, know, for example, the power that we're, we're intending to transmit through a gear set and power gives us uh, tangential force since that's the, the, the related force for power transmission. And then we can use that to find gear separating force, F sub R, which allows us to design our mounting system. All right. So I mentioned that we have power and we can relate that to tangential force. Well, it, it's related basically exactly how, how we might expect. Um, in that we can say it's a force times a velocity. If I'm talking about imperial units, then I have a little unit conversion built into this equation, assuming that I'm working in units of horsepower, which would be standard for this. 
And this V is, as I already mentioned, pitch line velocity. So it's the velocity of a point at that pitch circle on the gear in the tangential direction. So tangential velocity due to the rotation um, rotation of, of that gear. So this V is equal to pi d n over 12. And again, this is assuming d is in inches and uh, n is in RPM. All right. Also in here, we have F sub t, which is going to have units of pounds in this case. If we're talking about SI units, the equation is slightly simpler in that we don't need that funky unit conversion built in. So we just have F sub t times V, where force is in newtons, velocity is in meters per second, uh, which gives us watts as our power units in this case. Okay, so that's an introduction to, to spur gears. Um, Next, we're going to move into, you know, how we actually look at spur gears, do some, some stress analysis for them. But I'm going to stop here. Thanks.